Okay, everybody, this is Joseph P. Farrell. It is Thursday, June 12th, 2014. The year is going by quickly. I'm kind of amazed. And before we get to the news uh, that I want to comment about today, I do have a brief announcement for those of you who've been asking. Uh, David Childress of Adventures Unlimited Press, you've seen him on TV, quite a lot of you, um, just told me that they are expecting the book, the new book, Thrice Great Hermetica and the Janus Age, to ship from the printer sometime either this week or next week. And this means that Amazon should be getting the books within about a month. All right. I wouldn't say much longer than a month, but uh, the new book is on its way. It is at the printer, being printed, and getting ready to ship. So. I want to turn to <laughs> Pope Francis I once again because there is something going on in the Vatican. It concerns me, quite frankly, and it should concern you. This article is actually, I think, from a Muslim website. It's called Recitation of Quran and Namaz in the Vatican City Today. It's dated June 7th, so just a few days ago. And this article is a little bit woodenly translated into the English, but I want to read it to you and then make some brief comments because I think that this article is perhaps being misinterpreted by some people, or, or rather not the article, but the event, okay? I think it's being misinterpreted by some people. Not in the sense that they're wrong, but I just don't think they're going far enough. Here's what the article says. Recitation of Quran and Namaz in Vatican City today. For the first time in the history of the Vatican City, prayer call or azan, and I'm sorry I don't know Arabic, so if I'm mispronouncing that, bear with me. Prayer call will be pronounced and Salath will be offered today. Pope Francis I has invited the heads of Palestine and Israel to the Vatican City to join for a common prayer of the three major religions of the world. He had told that his intervention in the peace talks of Palestine and Israel is not appropriate for his position. But he hoped that by participating in common prayers, a congenial atmosphere would be created which would facilitate the peace process for which negotiations have been scheduled. The Pope told the pressman that in his prayer function, a Muslim scholar and Jewish rabbi would participate. The function would be held in the garden of the central church situated in the house of the Pope. The function is named as, quote, the worship offered from the bottom of the heart, unquote. After Sunday prayer, a special religious function of Christians would also be held in St. Peter's Square the morning of today. This function is being held at the insistence of the Pope. Christians are strongly opposing this move since in the history of the Vatican City, Azan, or the call to prayer, was not pronounced earlier and no Islamic prayer was organized. Media representatives, I'm skipping a short paragraph, media representatives of the entire world will cover this function. It will be a unique function in which the heads of Palestine and Israel will address the gathering from a common stage. According to the report, all of the religious leaders will participate in each other's religious prayers. According to Spanish media reports, there is no ban on Christians and Jews to participate in each other's religious prayers, but it will be a testing time for the president of Palestine, Mr. Mahmoud Abbas, and whether he will join in the prayers of the Christians and Jews being a Muslim. Mr. Mahmoud Abbas is taking the president of the Imams Union of Palestine, Mr. Sheikh Mohammed, and a religious leader from Palestine with him to Vatican City. Sheikh Mohammed will pronounce a prayer, the call to prayer and will lead Islamic prayer. The noted Jewish rabbi, Mr. Rasan Arosi, and, and an expert on the Talmud, will also go to Vatican City. It is reported that Pope Francis will participate in the prayer meetings of both his guests. It is understood this prayer meeting will be an exemplary step in the peace process. The Pope himself is leading this function. The Vatican City is the smallest country from the geographical standpoint, and so on and so on, close quotation. Now, I'll put up the link for this article. Now, obviously, this would be upsetting to any traditionalist Christian, 
be it a Protestant or a Roman Catholic, because what the post move does is it relativizes or levels and is in a certain sense can be taken as a betrayal of their tradition. By the same token, it would be upsetting to a traditionalist Jew to have the Pope participating in their prayers and their services. It would be upsetting to a Muslim, all right, for the same reasons. So in other words, it would be upsetting to all three branches of what I've been calling the Yahwist monotheisms for precisely the same reasons, because the move is a move toward relativism, all right, which none of the three in their explicit formal tenets can really countenance, all right? So what's going on here? What really is Francis doing other than trying to inject the papacy into the peace process in Palestine? And I've already gone on record many times and my close friends from years and years ago, I think, would attest to this. Years ago, uh, I made kind of a prediction, a speculation, that ultimately the papacy would be brought into the Palestinian Middle Eastern crisis as a broker for the attempt to resolve these religious tensions, and also perhaps even as a rep representative of the UN. So I think this, as far as the geopolitics is concerned, is what's going on. But let's put this into context. A few days ago and last week, I blogged about Francis and his statements that he'd be willing to baptize aliens if he was asked, if the church was asked. It would be okay. Now, that opens up, whether you like it or not, a floodgate of possibilities. Because baptism is, in Catholic teaching, Orthodox teaching, Lutheran teaching, Anglican teaching, this is the entry of an individual into the sacramental life of the church. And that means that for some, it can also be the entry to other sacraments, like holy orders, like, in other words, ordination to the diaconate, priesthood, and episcopacy. All right, so Francis is opening a huge theological problem here. All right, I hope everybody understands this. Now, the other thing I suggested is that what you actually see going on is an attempt to establish papal claims by example. All right, the formal definitions have usually in history followed the papacy's entrance or injection of itself into these types of situations. All right, so in other words, look for the injection, then the formal pronouncement. So in other words, what I suspect is really going on here is you have the attempt to outline by example a, an update of papal claims. And why is it so significant in terms of the religions? Back during the Renaissance, Dante Alighieri, the, the famous Italian poet who we know as, as the author of the Divine Comedy, but he was also a commentator, all right? And Dante Alighieri was one of the first people to speculate that on the basis of the natural virtues of man, and you have to understand within Roman Catholic theologies, there's the natural order, which is God-given, God-ordained, and then there's the supernatural revealed order, okay? Now, in the natural order, the virtues, says Dante, can lead to and should lead to, if we practice them, a global kind of new world order, all right? Now, this is very important because in the natural order, it is also thought and part of some Roman Catholic articulations of what they call natural theology, that monotheism is a natural rather than revealed thing. Now, that's not true for all practicers of natural theology. Certainly it's not true for some within the Protestant tradition of looking at natural theology. But my point here is, is I think what you're looking at is the beginning, very halting beginning, and this I grant you is speculation, but that you are looking at the beginning of the articulation of papal claims over the natural religions. I hope you understood what I just said. Because thus far, the papacy in history has been exercising its claims 
in a supernatural way. Even during the excesses of the Middle Ages, when you had the dictatorship of the papacy, you have to remember that that dictatorship was exercised through polit its control of political authorities. It wasn't a direct one. This is, however, a significant step because what it means is, if I'm correct, that you're looking at moves to position the papacy as the natural spokesman for any natural religion that is in existence or might exist. In other words, he's staking his claim now to speak for all of the monotheistic religions and to be the arbiter and broker for them and for their mutual relations. That can be extended ultimately to other religions. And this is a very, very significant step. He's becoming an ecumenical pope. And I suspect, and, and those who know me know that I've suspected this was part of the agenda since Vatican II and some of the documents that you can see in Vatican II. I think what you have is a careful game now being played by the papacy to position itself and update the papal claims, both in terms of an articulation of natural religion and outer space. And please note how the two go together, because outer space is a natural phenomenon. In other words, we might encounter natural religions out there. Now, I know this may not be making much sense for a lot of you, but I suspect that we're going to see whether my hunch is right or not if we see more of these types of things coming out of Francis. We've had the alien baptism pronouncement. Now we have this very, very provocative break with Catholic tradition by having Muslim and Jewish imams and rabbis offering prayers in the Vatican in which Francis is going to participate. So this is a pope to watch, folks. Um, I've had to revise significantly my thinking that this was going to be a caretaker pope to transition, uh, transition the papacy to a more second and third world orientation. I think this pope is beginning a process, and it's not going to end with him, of updating papal claims by example. And we can expect, therefore, if I'm correct, we can expect an attempt by the papacy to clarify its understanding of itself, its own claims in future encyclicals or statements coming out of the Vatican. So this is one to watch very carefully. And the other component that we need to watch is we need to watch how the Vatican articulates any ecumenical statements in the future regarding other religions. This is especially going to concern the Eastern Orthodox. This is something else coming down the pike. So that's it for today's news and views, folks. I hope it made sense. I want everyone to kind of watch. If you're a Vatican watcher, watch for these things, ecumenical statements, other religions, and so on. We need, we need to watch this pope very, very carefully because... Uh, I think, I think the game is only just beginning with this character. Anyway, that's it for News and Views. God bless everybody, and I will see you all on the flip side. Bye.